Hey guys, I hope all is well. Welcome back to the Truth Talk podcast. I'm here again with D. Hi everybody, I hope you guys are having a great day. Now the first thing I wanted to talk about today was actually the Nipsey Hustle and WAC 100 situation. I'm not sure if you guys are up to speed with what's going on, but um, there's this man named Hassan Campbell. I've actually spoken about him before in my African Bombada video. He's actually one of the victims of African Bombada. You could go look it up online because I can't really talk about what he uh, accused Bombada of doing because of the community guidelines, but you can definitely find it online. He's definitely connected to the originators of hip hop. He was a part of the whole entire start of hip hop. He was recently involved with WAC 100. He did an interview with WAC 100 and DJ Academics and 6 ix 9 Everything seemed to be good in the interview. There was nothing really that happened during the interview, but it's what happened after the interview. Hassan Campbell has his own YouTube channel. He goes live on there and he actually exposes a lot of stuff. He speaks about MK Ultra. He speaks about the gatekeepers in, in hip hop because, you know, like I said, he was already attached to that part of hip hop. He was already part of it since the beginning and he's already seen a lot himself. He was actually doing business with WAC 100 and eventually the things went sour as it appears. It appears that Hassan Campbell and WAC 100 got into an argument on Clubhouse. WAC 100 brought up what Bambada had did to him and started disrespecting Hassan. And it seemed like there was going to be an issue between both of them. And this led to what Hassan did next, which was he started releasing recordings. Hassan actually recorded a conversation between him, WAC 100, and Big U. And in the conversation, we hear WAC 100 clearly speak about a situation between him and Nipsey Hussle where it appears that WAC 100 was blackmailing Nipsey Hussle and his family, forcing them to make payments to keep a tape that he had between Nipsey Hussle, Lauren London, and one of Nipsey Hussle's friends. They had relations together and things happened in the video that many people wouldn't expect from Nipsey and actually goes against his entire image. Essentially, WAC 100 was using this tape to like extort money from Nipsey. I actually want to talk about this situation here. First, I want to ask you, what do you think, D? From what you remember of Nipsey Hussle and what you've seen of Nipsey Hussle, would you ever think that he would be accused of doing something like this, that this would be stuff that he would be into? No, I never thought he would actually participate in these kind of activities, nor did I think that his wife would either but then again we don't know these people we don't really don't know their lifestyles or what they're into we only know what they show us like it's like a blanket they cover everything they you know, try to protect themselves essentially see i want people to understand in la in the west coast nipsey hustle is, is looked at as a legend now he's looked at as a legend now because that's the narrative that they wanted to push with his career Many of you might disagree with me, but me, I'm from the East Coast, me being from New York, I heard of Nipsey before his passing, but I saw people actually mess with his music after his passing. Before his passing, I didn't really see anybody bumping Nipsey, at least not in New York City. It didn't appear that Nipsey Hussle was a superstar in any sense, but when he passed, that was the narrative. We saw the entire LA come out and support him, and he appeared to be one of the biggest figures in LA, and the whole world came out to show him love. His career never really reached the top, but it did appear that people made money off of his passing. Now, I'm not saying it was WAC 100 because I don't have proof of this, but we do know now that WAC 100 was extorting him. WAC 100 had these tapes that would literally destroy Nipsey's image. It'll go against everything that Nipsey stand for if it was released. WAC 100 used that to literally keep Nipsey Hussle, you know, in check and be able to get what he wants from him. Apparently, he even tried to extort Lauren London after Nipsey was gone. I want you to comprehend how the music industry works. The devil works in many ways, and WAC 100 is essentially the devil himself in the way that he runs the music industry. He uses the tactic of fear and violence the same way that we saw with Suge Knight, where it's a tactic of, of extorting people and forcing people to do things so that things won't happen to them. And that's what we're seeing WAC 100 doing. Nipsey Hussle has all these fans. Nipsey Hussle became really big after his passing. And I want you to understand that it seems that they wanted this to happen. It's like they created his image, you know, to blow up. And then when he, once he passed, which is passing, I, I spoke about on my second channel. I did a video a while back and I broke it down where I, I don't believe it made any sense what they were saying happened to him. He was surrounded by what's supposed to be all his goons and all his friends that were supposed to be on that time for him and ready for anything to happen. And apparently someone was able to go right in between all those people, do that to Nip, and nothing happened to him. That, since day one, seems suspicious to me. But now hearing these tapes, hearing the fact that there was something that literally could destroy Nipsey's character and would tarnish his career was being used against Nipsey in order for them to make money. And that's how the music industry works. 
for the love of money is the root of all evil. And that means that people literally would love money and were willing to do anything for it. And they don't care of the consequences. They love money more than they love themselves. That's where evil begins. And we are seeing a lot of evil from WAC 100. WAC 100 also claims that he has another tape from Kim Kardashian. You heard about this, D, right? Yeah, I heard about it a while back. I think that's crazy because the first one, the only one that we ever knew about was the one between her and Ray J. And I also think it's crazy that he's over here extorting people with all of their relation videos. How did he even get a hold of these videos? Who is over here taking their videos? Putting them somewhere where this man can then put his hands on them and then extort them for money. It doesn't make sense to me. That is a good point. I wonder if these people are recording these things. You know, the tapes are just floating around or people are hacking into them or, or, and getting their hands on it. But it does seem like WAC 100 keeps getting his hands on these tapes. I want to speak a little bit more on Hassan Campbell. Because Hassan Campbell, he's saying that the industry is sending their assassins on him. They're coming after him to bring down his platform. Now, WAC 100 is claiming that Hassan Campbell recorded their conversation illegally. So he's going to get his channel taken down and all this nonsense. We might have to do a full video on Hassan Campbell and see, you know, what's really going on with him. Because it appears that he is exposing a lot. He came out and said these things, that the industry is going to take him down, that the feds are in his, his chat. He says all these things. It might sound far-fetched. But the thing is, this is exactly how things go. If you say something that they don't want you to say, they're going to send someone to bring you down or you just will never get anywhere. And that's how things work. You know, that that's the consequence of exposing the truth. What Hassan is saying now about Nipsey is destroying and tarnishing his image, but it's not even Hassan's fault because he's literally exposing the truth. Nipsey wasn't who he appears to be. He did things in private that would make people question if he was really who he claimed to be. I'm not taking nothing from Nipsey. In my opinion, I felt Nipsey was a Masonic puppet, just like the rest of them. I seen this when I did my research on him. The Freemasons even attended his ceremony. Nipsey was involved in something that ended up costing him too much. And we could see this often happens. Like, yeah, there's this tape floating around of him. But even worse, he lost everything. He's not even, he's not here no more. And who knows if any of this is connected. What do you think, D? Do you think it's connected? Do you think the tape could have anything to do with what happened to him, with him passing? If I'm being completely honest, I'm not too sure, only because they said that his passing was gang related. You know, none of this came out then, and that was, that happened so long ago. This is all coming to surface now, and I'm pretty sure this is something that he's dealt with way before it was even close to his passing. I'm pretty sure he's been being extorted for this video by this man for some time now. This man feels like, you know, comfortable doing this. So the leverage that he had over Nipsey and Lauren must have been like extremely high. I don't think that they were connected. I think if they were possibly connected, we probably would have heard about this much more sooner than now. I actually disagree with you right there because I don't think we were ever supposed to hear this. This is not something that comes out. The reason this is information that we're hearing is because Hassan Campbell outmastered WAC 100. WAC 100 thought that he was manipulating Hassan. Hassan actually pulled the Uno reverse card on him and showed that he was actually playing him the whole time. Hassan claims that he heard this conversation and when he heard this conversation, he felt disgusted and had to hang up. I believe Hassan was also playing his cards right. He said he realized that WAC 100 is a snake. It's true. You know, he claims that WAC 100 and DJ Academics and 6 9 that they invited him to sit at Satan's table. Another thing that's true, Hassan has a lot of good points. I'm not going to lie. I've heard him talk about as well about the drill movement and how it's destroying, you know, our community. He's from the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx. So I support that message. It's sad for me to see all those kids lose everything over music. When you think about it, you know, the record labels are getting richer while the parents are crying. And Hassan stands against that. Throughout the whole entire podcast between academics and 6 9 Hassan was actually bringing up some good points. He was telling 6 9 that he needs to use his position of power to do good. Instead of being evil and, and promoting evil and continuing the agenda, he could revert that and support something good. 6 9 is running around with a whole new group of people, a whole new group of lives that he's now in charge of, and he's most likely going to sadly do the same that happened to the last group. And that's exactly what Hassan was trying to tell them. And I think that's what WAC 100 didn't like, because like I said, WAC 100 is definitely pushing the agenda. He is 100% pushing the agenda because he's profiting from it. And that's the reason most of these people do it. Most of these people do all they do for their love of money. I don't know Hassan Campbell's life. I know that he was a part of the African Bombada situation, but he was a victim in that situation. You know, like he was a child. He was really young. He was being instructed by these older people to do things. There were things being done to him. 
and that's a sad situation. In my opinion, he seems to be using his platform for the most part for a good. I don't see much of a bad message coming from him, at least from what I've seen so far. It's interesting that he says that they're coming after him, they're trying to stop him. If you think about it, WAC 100 seems to be that person that was trying to stop him. He, one moment to the next, just flipped on Hassan, and Hassan had no choice but to do what he did. Let's actually move on now. The next thing I want to talk about was why most rappers are actually broke. Now, when we look at hip hop, we always think all these rappers are rich. All these rappers are living that lifestyle that you would love to live. They have things that you don't. And from the outside looking in, they appear to be the most successful, rich people in the world that have no limitations to what they can do. But in all honesty, that's not the truth. Most of your favorite rappers are either broke, going broke, or were never rich. Unless you're a, a rapper like Drake, Kendrick Lamar, they see a percentage of the money they made, about 10, 20%. And even that 10, 20% will make them well into millionaires, you know? The music industry has been created since its inception, since the beginning, to rob the artists, to manipulate the artists and rob them. And most artists are okay with it because they just want that 15 minutes of fame. They want to be in the spotlight for just a few minutes. They want to have that lifestyle. Some also think that it was never going to end. They feel like they'll be a superstar for the rest of their lives. But in reality, the music industry is set up for that the artist to never prosper. That's what it is. It's like a trap. I explained this in my record label video. When a record label comes and signs you, they're going to give you an advance. And they're going to give you a set deal. They'll say, you know, $3 million for a two-album deal. And what they're stating is that for your two albums, they're going to spend $3 million. That's including your advance and everything in between. You know, at the end of the day, it's going to be a little bit more money. And then there's taxes and interest and all this stuff. Essentially, you would owe that $3 million no matter matter what so you're already in three million dollar debt once they spend that three million dollars on you you owe the record label three million dollars most artists don't get a huge record they just don't you know they'll have a few good records that take off and have some attention but we don't really see a lot of artists have huge records to the point where they're literally the biggest artist that year and that leads to a lot of artists falling in debt even the ones that have a big record they still fall in debt because they first have to pay let's say the record makes five ten million dollars if you know they spend three four million on promoting and getting things ready for your career and yeah you owe the record for record label four million dollars so the off the jump they're going to clear their four million dollar debt and now whatever's left the artist is going to get eight to four percent and the record label keeps the rest and that's the sad truth at the end of the day the artist is going to be flat broke they're going to get you know hundred thousand or fifty thousand dollars for a hit record maybe a little bit more but in a rapper's lifestyle that's not enough money to continue to live so what they'll do is the record label realizes this kid is able to be successful so let's re-sign them and let's give them an even bigger advance let's give them seven to ten million dollars now when they do this this is the perfect trap now the record label knows they're going to get their money back but now you're so far in debt that you're not going to see money anytime soon and you're going to need another advance and that's how the record label continues to keep you on the negative that's how the record label continues to use you for your hit records and for the money that you could produce for them d when you look at your favorite artists you would automatically assume that they're rich right of course you would assume that all of these celebrities are rich the lavish lifestyles they live the expensive cars they drive the big houses they have you know the trips they go on the clothes the clothes that they wear you know you know you expect these celebrities to be like millionaires to have so much money but the truth is that you know they really don't have that much to their name they're probably you know living just like the rest of us yeah they do have a nice house yeah they do have the clothes and the cars but that all comes out of the money that the record label is giving them so at the end of the day they really don't have much of anything it's an illusion it's the way that they get more artists to sign it's the way that they keep the audience entertained because the music industry hip-hop in general they love to sell an illusion they love to sell an image a lifestyle they want the audience to see these artists like gods they want them to see them like icons you know like the biggest things in the world and part of looking like that is having this out of this world image and having the most expensive jewelry and the nicest cars and the biggest house but it's all lent it's all alone it's all fake these artists represent that record label. So the record label essentially just gives them all these things, or well, not gives them, gives them the money for them to purchase all these things. And they'll purchase all these things, not knowing that they just put themselves, it's like getting a, a really big credit card. 
going shopping, you feel like you don't have, you know, like there's no, there's no end to your shopping. And then you get home and you see the bill. That's what happens with these rappers. They're hot for two, three years. They're making great songs. Everything's going good. Then they go home. They look at their bill. They look at what the record label took of all the money they made. And they, they ask themselves, I just made 10 million. How do I have no money to my name? That's the sad situation of hip hop. A lot of these kids want to be artists. And I actually, I want to ask you a question. If you want to be an artist, this question is for you. Would you rather be happy, know that you're 100% going to have complete and total happiness, but never achieve your dream or live out your dream? Or would you rather live out your dream, but not know 100% that once you get to your dream, you're going to be happy? Let me explain to you what I mean by this. Most people believe that when they achieve their dreams, they're going to be able to be happy. Most people dedicate their entire lives to getting to this point where they're either a rapper, a basketball player, even if you're going to school. They believe that the moment that they accomplish their goals and they reach their dreams, that they're 100% going to be happy. The thing is, if we look at the richest people, the ones who actually accomplish their dreams and living out their dreams, most of them don't look happy. Most of them look depressed. Most of them you can tell that they're missing something because they spent their entire lives working towards the wrong thing. If you were to ask me that question, I would have to say I'll take happiness because if I know that I'm going to be happy and not live my dream, then it wasn't my dream that I needed to be happy. It was something else. I would prefer to 100% be happy and forget about my dreams if the only reason I was chasing my dreams were for happiness. So that's how I want people to look at it. I want people to understand accomplishing your dream is just a part of your life it isn't the main part of your life it isn't what's going to bring you happiness happiness comes from within and your connection and your relationship with god you have to be able to understand yourself you have to be able to comprehend what's wrong with yourself and help on improving it because you can have all the money in the world and if your problem is within you're never going to be happy it doesn't matter how much you have it doesn't matter where you live it doesn't matter who you're around if you're not happy within yourself, if you don't have the right people around you who love you and support you, if you haven't fixed yourself internally, none of the money, the fame, or the success is going to make it better. It's actually going to make it worse. And we've seen this with many artists. What do you feel, Dee? Would you prefer to have your dream or happiness? I think that happiness should be your ultimate goal. We've already seen with a lot of celebrities, actors, actresses that, you know, they make it all the way up there, but they're not happy. And we see their tragic endings because they weren't happy. Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to want to chase their goals because like you said, people think, oh, once I become a writer, an actor, an artist, I will be happy. But again, like you said, happiness comes within you. You can't chase something expecting something to make you happy. You have to make yourself happy. It's within yourself. For example, in the comment section, I see a lot of you guys tell me all the time, is it possible for me to be a rapper without selling my soul? I actually did a full video on my second channel where I actually explained that you could. But the thing is, I want you guys to understand, just because you make it as a rapper does not mean you're going to be happy. You might have moments of happiness. It might be fun at the beginning, but if you're chasing your dreams for your happiness, it might not be the answer. You should work on yourself first. See if being a rapper is really what you want. A lot of us are just, we're missing what makes us happy. We're missing a passion for something and we want to do something with our lives. We look at these rappers and we like, if we have that, we're gonna be happy for sure. That lifestyle has gotta be amazing. But we've seen time and time again, it's not what it appears to be. It's full of evil. And in my opinion, it's something that many people should stay away from. The music industry is created as an illusion to bring people in that believe, oh, once I make it in, I'll be happy. And it's not. It's just a trick. That's how the devil gets you. He literally convinces you to sell your soul for a moment of artificial happiness. Because once you have it, it starts to fade away. You know, you start to realize that this isn't what's going to make you happy. This isn't what's going to give you what you want. It doesn't matter if you're a millionaire or not. A lot of these artists are begging to get into the music industry just to make a hit record for the record label so that the record label would rob them and they end up broke. The record industry is not made for you to be happy. The music industry is made for you to make money for the record labels. That's the reason these record labels sign artists when before they even blow up. If they think that these artists are going to blow and make a lot of money, they want them from the beginning so they can have every bit of it and they can, they can control their outcome. That's it for this podcast. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you go subscribe to my second channel, The True Fist Second Channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm working on more videos that should be coming out this week. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye, everybody. I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you for watching this episode of The True Fist. If you would like to further support the channel, join me on Patreon. The link would be in the description.
If you join before the 28th of this month, you could be entered to this month's monthly raffle, where you can win a shirt, a cash prize, and even pick a video topic. Also, please leave a comment below on your thoughts on this video and on any future topics you would like to see me cover on my channel. If you like this video, please hit the like button as this helps other people find these videos. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified of future videos. Please follow me on Instagram at the truth is 01 and on TikTok at the truth is. I will gladly appreciate it. Thank you. Goodbye.